Okay, so today what I'm going to do is run through the Chatelier's principle and how it can be used to predict how an equilibrium adapts to any changes in conditions. His principle says, as you can read, a system at equilibrium will react to oppose any change that's imposed upon it. So let's see, what does that mean? Let's look at the changes that are possible. So if we make an equilibrium hotter, the equilibrium will move to cool it down. If we make the equilibrium colder, the equilibrium moves to heat it up. If we raise the pressure, the equilibrium moves to lower the pressure. If we lower the pressure, the equilibrium tries to raise it. If we add a chemical, the equilibrium tries to get rid of it. And if we remove a chemical, the equilibrium tries to make more. We'll also look at the effect of adding a catalyst to an equilibrium mixture. So first of all, what happens if you change the concentration of reactants or products? Well, the equilibrium responds to that change and tries to re-establish the equilibrium. So if we add a reactant or remove a product, the equilibrium moves to the right and we get more product. This is particularly useful in industrial processes. If we remove the key product, then we can actually make more of that product. If we remove a reactant or add a product, then the equilibrium will, will move to the left and more of the reactant will be obtained. Please note that making these changes does not change Kc because Kc will then come back, or the equilibrium, sorry, will balance itself out again and you'll still get the same value for Kc. If you change the pressure, this is a little bit of, like a balloon. If you squash the fat end of a balloon, increase the pressure on that end, then the balloon will get fatter at the thin end. And it's the same here. If you increase the pressure, then the equilibrium will move to the side with the fewer moles of gas. Now why is that? Well, pressure is caused by gas particles colliding with the side of the vessel it's contained in. So if you've got fewer moles of gas, fewer collisions, so lower pressure. Now this only works if, or only has any impact, if there are differing numbers of moles of gas on either side of the equation. So in the top one of these two equations on the slide, you can see there are two moles of gas forming three moles, uh, sorry, four moles of gas can't count. So if I increase the pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the left to try and decrease the pressure, the side with the fewer gaseous moles. Now changing the pressure has no impact on the second equilibrium on the slide because there are the same number of gaseous moles on each side of the equation. Again, Kc is unchanged by changes in pressure. The equilibrium will balance out again in exactly the same place once it's, all these changes have occurred. Change in temperature is a little bit harder to understand. A change in temperature will alter the rate of the forward and backward reactions by different, different amounts. So in this instance, when you change the temperature, you will also change the value for Kc. We can still use the Chatelier's principle though, fortunately. So for an exothermic forward reaction, so the backward reaction will be endothermic, of course. Heat energy is released during an endothermic reaction. So if you increase the temperature, the equilibrium will move backwards to the left in the endothermic direction to try and cool things down again. So there will be fewer products. However, as the temperature is higher, equilibrium is reached quicker. 
Now, if you decrease the temperature, the rate of the reaction will slow down. However, if you decrease the temperature, the forward reaction is favoured as it's exothermic and is therefore trying to increase the temperature again. I could say and vice versa if the endothermic reaction, uh, sorry, if the forward reaction is endothermic, but again I'll just read through it. So, for an endothermic forward reaction, in an endothermic reaction heat energy is absorbed. So, an increase in temperature will cause the reaction to move in the endothermic direction. That is, to the right, so there are more products. The temperature is, uh, sorry, the equilibrium is reached faster because the temperature is higher. Now, for an endothermic reaction, if I cool it down, obviously the rate is slower, but it will move in the exothermic direction, which is backwards uh, in this instance, so there'll be less product formed. So that's a pretty useless thing to try and do for any industrial process. What I want you to do is just pause the video and try and deduce how Kc changes in both those scenarios illustrated there. An exothermic reaction with an increase in temperature and then a decrease in temperature and an endothermic reaction with an increase in temperature and then a decrease in temperature. So stop the video now and think about your answers to that question, or those questions. So how well did you get on? For an exothermic reaction, if you increase the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the left-hand side, in the endothermic direction, trying to try and cool things down again. So, Kc goes down. So how did you get on? For an exothermic reaction, if you increase the temperature, the equilibrium will go to the left to try and decrease the temperature, so Kc goes down. For an exothermic reaction, if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to the right to try and increase the temperature again, so Kc goes up. There are more products. For an endothermic reaction, increasing the temperature, the equilibrium shifts to Right, so Kc goes up. And if you decrease the temperature, the equilibrium goes to the left, so Kc goes down. So how did you get on? That's actually quite tricky, but quite important to bear in mind and remember. So if we add a catalyst, again we've got a scenario where Kc does not change. There's no change in the equilibrium mixture at all because a catalyst increases the rate of the forward and backward reactions by exactly the same amount. So the equilibrium position is actually reached faster but the composition does not change. And there is a little summary diagram that you may or may not find useful. You'll, the observant will notice that that is the last slide in the presentation. Um, I want you to now attempt the two worksheets that I'm about to post as well, please. And that means we have actually finished the standard level of topic 7.